Thank you, and thank you for what you've done to research and promote this proposal. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, later on, uh, as uh, Ted indicated, I'm going to read to you a short statement from my uh, colleague and friend George Schultz. As many of you probably know, George has always been able to work effectively at the intersection of politics and policy. When he reached out to me last year about this plan, I think he had recognized something with which I quickly agreed, and that is that for too long, we Republicans and conservatives haven't occupied a real place at the table during the debate about global climate change. Instead, we have tended to dispute the fact of climate change, and particularly the extent to which man is responsible for any changes in the Earth's climate. Now, I need, in the interest of full disclosure, to tell you that I was and remain uh, somewhat of a skeptic about the extent to which man is responsible for climate change. But I do think that the, that the risks associated with it, if, they're, if the people who believe it has happened and is going to continue to happen are correct, the risks are too great to ignore and that we need some sort of an insurance policy. And that if we can get an insurance policy that is a conservative approach based on the free market, that limits government, doesn't expand government, and that, and that is competitive internationally, that's a win-win, and we ought to take a look at that. And that's why we're here today. We have no assurance at all that this is going to be something that uh, the administration will uh, grab hold of. We happen to believe that this would help make America great again, but that's our view. We'll see what the administration uh, uh, thinks about it. Uh, we don't need an insurance policy, though, that relies on government regulation as a stick with which to beat our power companies that, uh, that power this country. Uh, and this proposal, as I think Ted has indicated, could lead to the elimination of most, if not all, of those very onerous uh, EPA regulations uh, having to do with, uh, uh, with the use of, uh, with the production of carbon, the use of, of uh, and the production of power in this country, including an outright repeal of the Clean Power Act. Uh, this proposal is essentially revenue neutral. Uh, when I did tax reform uh, for Ronald Reagan back in 1986, it was a real slog. Uh, we're talking about tax reform today. Uh, I don't know whether we can get it done again or not. We, it was the only time it had been done in 100 years, and we would never have been successful if it hadn't been done on a, uh, on a revenue neutral basis. If you get it wrapped up around, all wrapped around the axle of the budget debate, you're not going to get anything done. This is revenue neutral. Uh, uh, many of the companies which are responsible for the production of greenhouse gases, including four of the, of the world's six largest oil companies, have now supported the idea in one way or another of a carbon tax. I don't want to see our proposal characterized as a carbon tax, even though that is included in it. This is a proposal for carbon dividends to the American people. And that's going to be, I think, the beauty of, of it in terms of trying to build uh, public support for it. Uh, I was a big uh, supporter and still am of our new Secretary of State, who is sitting in the chair I used to sit in on the seventh floor of the State Department, Rex Tillerson. He ran, uh, he ran uh, one of the world's largest corporations and perhaps the the biggest, uh, as far as I know, uh, oil and gas company in the world. And he has demonstrated his uh, managerial uh, abilities and his negotiating abilities, and I think he's going to be a terrific Secretary of State. But here's what he said some time ago. He said, replacing the hodgepodge of current largely ineffective regulations with a revenue-neutral carbon tax would ensure a uniform and predictable cost of carbon across the economy. It would allow market forces to drive solutions. It would maximize transparency. It would reduce administrative complexity. It would promote global participation. 
and easily adjust to future developments in our understanding of climate science as well as the policy consequences of these actions. Supporting such an approach is not only responsible public policy, I happen to think it is also good politics. As Ted has said, polling indicates today that some 64 to 66 percent uh, of all Americans worry uh, to some degree or another about climate change. And demand for a response to this is growing in this country uh, and around the world. So whether you really believe it as a fact, as Ted does, or, have, or think it can be debated, as I do, I think you need to take a look at the consequences uh, of it if, if Ted is right, uh, because they would be dire. And therefore, we ought to have some sort of an uh, insurance policy. I think this plan does put America first. It allows our party, our political party, to lead from the high ground on a challenge that is critical and that faces all of us, in my view. Now, I want to read uh, to you from uh, a, a statement. Uh, I want to read a statement to you that my friend George uh, Schultz sent us. I'm sorry I cannot be with you at the National Press Club today, but I am delighted to take part in this formal launch of the Climate Leadership Council and to be co-author along with several of my longtime friends of this important new report on carbon dividends. Carbon dividends. This is a program for carbon dividends. There's a carbon tax buried in there somewhere, but this is a program on carbon dividends. Make sure you understand that. And every American is going to get a dividend quarterly from the taxes that are collected uh, on, on the production of carbon. George goes on to say, I like market solutions. Markets bring informed views on various sides of any transaction, and they generally produce op optimal solutions. The carbon tax puts a price out there that levels the playing field among competing sources of energy and then lets the park, uh, market pick the winners. The revenue neutral aspect of our plan means that there will be no fiscal drag on our economy. In that sense, it is really not a tax, this is George, since no money stays with the government. Rebating the carbon tax proceeds through dividends means that the great majority of Americans will be economically better off <laughs> under our plan than they are today under the onerous regulatory regime uh, that, that we face. Massive amounts of physical evidence attest to the reality of climate change, says George, and the main cause seems to be increasing levels of carbon dioxide in the air. To the extent that anybody has doubts about the cause, they should consider the potential consequences, and they should follow President Reagan's approach to the depletion of the ozone layer. When, when, uh, when George and I were serving President Reagan, he advocated for an insurance policy, much as we're advocating today an insurance policy against the depletion of the ozone uh, layer. As it turned out, the scientists who were, who were worried at that time about that depletion turned out to be right, and Reagan's Montreal Protocol came along just in time. So we argue that we ought to substitute a carbon tax for the raft of regulations and subsidies that now characterize this issue. For the sake of our children and grandchildren, I believe, it, I believe it is imperative that we set forth a climate solution that embodies long-standing conservative principles and can return the Republican leadership to a constructive stance on this critical issue. Thank you all very much. Well, we're going to the White House as soon as we uh, finish this press conference without any uh, preconceived notion about where they may come down on this. But this makes such good sense from a conservative, limited government, free market uh, a, a pro competitive approach that uh, at the very least we hope they'll take a look at it. We believe they will. It's a, it, it, <laughs> it may be a panacea. I like that uh, word, Greg. But uh, we know we have a we know we have an uphill slog to uh, to get uh, Republicans uh, interested in this. 
But when you, when you give them the, uh, the option of getting rid of things like the clean power plan, maybe even tort liability uh, for, uh, uh, in this area, stuff like that, uh, there's going to be some appeal uh, to, to some conservatives. Uh, I'm not at all sure. I don't know where uh, you mentioned Senator Cruz. I don't know where Senator Cruz is on this. But, but uh, I, think there, I think there are a lot of people uh, out there in my party who uh, are responsible and reasonable and will take a look at this. And it, it's our hope that they'll take a good, long, hard look at it and that they'll uh, realize the wisdom of it and the fact that uh, try, coming up with a conservative free market approach uh, is, is a very a Republican way of, uh, of approaching the problem. Most of the opposition to this has been, on the Republican side, has been that it constitutes another tax. Uh, I, work for the, I work for the man, and so did Marty Felstein, who, to whom taxes were anathema. Uh, and, uh, and he was quite right about it a lot of times, <laughs> most of the time, almost all of the time. But this is not a tax in that sense. It does not grow government. It is rebated dollar for dollar to the American people. And there's going to be some benefit, specific material benefit in it for each American citizen. So uh, you can't look at this as a tax, even though the word carbon tax is used. Thank you. Uh, please. Hi, Jack Fitzpatrick at the Morning Consult. Uh, first, could you clarify uh, who exactly you're meeting with at the White House today? Uh, and, and second, I'm curious who you uh, think sort of the first point of contact is that can get the ball rolling on this and who you have to persuade uh, to take this up. Is it, is it lawmakers in Congress? Do you think the president himself is, is going to delegate this to advisors? Is the vice president maybe the, the lead person? Well, we're going to meet, we're gonna meet uh, with Gary Cohn, who's the president's uh, chief economic advisor and head of, I think, the National Economic Council. Uh, beyond that, I can't tell you who we're going to meet with. We'll find out after we get there. You'll find out after we get there. Uh, in terms of where the leadership ought to come from, it's, uh, I'm a creature of the executive branch. It's always been my view that the president uh, needs to lead uh, in our democracy if we're going to get if we're going to get anything done. Uh, and so. I, I think we have to have the support of people on the Hill, yes, but I think uh, it would really be important as well to get the executive branch on board if we can. We make no claims about whether we can or not, but this is a really sensible, reasonable, moderate, conservative, free market, limited government approach to this problem, so it ha ought to have some appeal.